All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're continuing on with notes on circles. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about segments, lines, chords, tangent lines, a bunch of lines and segments in circles. We're also going to be talking about central angle measures and then arc measures. And again, that's measure, not length. Okay. So the definitions that we're going to be talking about, things we're going to be talking about, we're going to be identifying special segments and lines using properties of tangents, finding arc measure, and then using chords and circles to find lengths and arc measures. Okay. So talking about it, what a couple of these things are, starting off with just some identification and some definitions, special segments and lines. Okay. What is a tangent line? A tangent line is a line that intersects the circle at one point. Okay, so the example of this one would be this line up top here. We see it passes the circle, but it intersects it only at one point. So when we ask what is the point of tangency, here this would be a tangent line example. That point of tangency, that's the point where it touches the circle, that single point. So here point A would be my point of tangency, all right? Now the next definition is what is a secant line? A secant line is a line that intersects the circle at two points. Okay, so an example would be like line EB here. You see secant line, it has arrows on both sides, it hits the circle at two different points, E and B. So the example that we would draw here would be line EB. And again, we're putting arrows on that because it's a secant line. When we name it, we have arrows on the name, okay? Now, some older ones that we've done in the past, we have a radius, a diameter, and then we're gonna talk about what a chord is and how it's similar to a secant line, but a little different, okay? So radius, that is just the distance from the center of the circle to the edge. So this would be like line segment SC here, or you could do line segment SD given to you, starts at the center, goes to the edge. The diameter, of course, next one would be all the way across. So this would be the line segment DC, or line segment CD, you know, order doesn't matter when you're naming a line segment, okay? So that's old basic stuff, we know that. Now, a, what a chord is, guys, a chord is a line segment that's in a circle, it hits both pieces, both parts touch on the outside, okay? But it doesn't continue to go, all right? So a couple of examples of a chord would be like, say we wrote line segment EB, okay? Now this is different than the secant line because this one just has the bar, no arrows. That means it's just from a point E to point B. That would be a chord, okay? Whereas a secant line would continue to go, all right? Or we could just name the diameter here, line segment DC. The diameter is a chord. It just happens to go through the center of the circle. So again, a chord is a line segment in a circle that hits on both sides, okay? You see, it's C and D, okay? That would be a chord, B and E, that would be a chord, okay? And we'll see a bunch of different examples as we go through this, all right? So, identifying special segments and lines, I'm gonna do my best, try to keep the example over here as we go through this, all right? First question is name two radii, okay? So you got multiple options. I would say like A, B is a pretty obvious one here, all right? So line segment A, B, all right? Or you could use either half of my diameter over here, A to F or A to D, so I'll just say line segment A, F, okay? All right, gonna have to jump around a little bit. Now, number two here, name a chord. Okay, so one I would see here is we see we have a line segment hitting at E and C. It is a line segment. It does not continue to go. So I could use that as a chord, line segment E, C. All right, there you go. Another example of that would be like DF would be the diameter, but that's also a chord. Or if you just said line segment DE, not line DE, but line segment DE, that would be from this point to this point, that's technically a chord as well, okay? Bunch of examples. Now, of course, the diameter, we just named that. That's all the way across the circle going through the center. That would be DF here. Line segment DF would be my diameter. Now, a secant line, again, a secant line is a line that hits the circle at two points but keeps going. That would be line DE, okay? And again, secant is a line, so when we're naming it, it's gotta have arrows, okay? Not a line segment, it is a secant line. 
If it was a secant segment, we would call that a chord, okay? Now, name your tangent line. Tangent line is over here. Um, now here, it doesn't really give us two points, so we could just call this like line. Well, I'm just gonna write a little L out there. Remember the script notation out next to the line? That is, again, a name if it gave you an example like this, so I could call this line. L, okay, but that point of tangency for line L out here on the side would be point B. Point of tangency is that one spot where the tangent line intersects with the circle, okay? So a little bit of identification, all right? Now guys, we're gonna be going into some properties, okay? I'm gonna be folding my paper, kind of trying to get all these examples on camera here. Now down on some of these examples, guys, I'm gonna give you properties here on the left then we'll do examples. We're not gonna do all of these. We'll skip a couple of them, but we'll get you what you need, okay? So using properties of tangent. So tangent, the line that intersects the circle at one point is what we're talking about, okay? So here, line M is tangent to circle Q if and only if line M is perpendicular to QP, okay? So let me just kind of give this to you as it shows it, and then we'll kind of talk through it and how you're gonna use it. So we have QP, which is a radius, all right? So anytime you have a radius hitting a tangent line, it will always hit at a right angle. So again, radius and tangent line will always be a perpendicular relationship. That's what this, that's what this symbol means right now, this upside down T, okay? So the measure of angle, let's say like QPS, QPS, that's gonna be 90 degrees, okay? So that's just kind of the rule there, guys. Whenever you have a tangent line and a radius that are intersecting at that point of tangency, yes, that's always gonna be a perpendicular relationship, all right? So when we're looking at number seven here, we see we have radius TP intersecting a tangent line segment, doesn't matter, it's a line segment, okay? Tangent line hits at T, that's at 35, that ST. So guys, radius, tangent, that is going to be a right angle. This is a right triangle problem. It asks, is tangent ST, is it tangent to circle P, okay? So in order for this to be the case, and we're gonna have to check this, okay? In order for this to be the case, Pythagorean theorem will have to work here. So we got A squared, B squared equals C squared, okay? So let's go ahead and set that up. Again, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We are proving that this is tangent. We're proving that this actually is a right angle, okay? If it works, Pythagorean theorem works, then we're good to go. If not, then no, it's not tangent, okay? So I'll say like 35 squared plus 12 squared equals 37 squared. Again, 37 would be my hypotenuse there, okay? So we have 1,225 plus 144 equals 1,369, I'm just evaluating this. We combine these two here on the left, 1,369 equals 1,369. Pythagorean theorem works, this is a true statement, these are equal, so yes. Is it tangent? Yes, why? Because it's a right triangle, that means the, ta the tangent and the radius have in fact hit a right angle, making this figure a right triangle problem, okay? Pretty recognizable problem, okay? All right, number eight, we're gonna skip this one. We're gonna move on to talk about the other tangent theorem here, okay? Up top, we have our external tangent congru uh, congruence theorem. If line segment SR and line segment ST are tangent segments, then they're automatically congruent. Now look what this is saying, guys. We have point R and point T that are both tangent, but they've hit at the same point, okay? So SR and ST are both tangent lines that intersect at the same point. That means they are automatically gonna be congruent. Again, this is a very recognizable problem. Two tangent lines hitting at the same point. So we look over here, based on our theorem, these are gonna automatically be congruent, guys. This is not that difficult of a problem. So again, it says RS is tangent to circle C at S, RT is tangent to circle C at T, find the value of X. So again, already talked through, I made my markings, two tangent lines intersecting at the same point, they're automatically congruent, okay? So us solving for X, we're just gonna take the two measures, the expression measures it gives us here, and we're gonna set them equal because they represent congruent line segments. So again, three X plus four, equals 28, okay? Solving for X, we'll subtract four from both sides, 
get 3x equals 24, divide both sides by 3, get x equals positive 8 for our final answer there, okay? Pretty straightforward stuff. Sorry, I kind of missed my work there, okay? Again, 3x plus 4 equals 28. I'm solving via algebra to get x equals 8 there, okay? And that's my answer because that's what it asks for, value of x, okay? Congruent line segments. If you have two tangents hitting at the same point, they're automatically congruent, okay? All right, now moving on. Finding arc measure, okay? Arc measure will be in degrees, all right? Now, going through these bullet points, just giving us little hints here. I'll jump over, I'll make some markings here on the figure as well, all right? Now, the measure of the entire circle, this is a degree measure, is of course 360 degrees, all right? 360 all the way around, all right? Measure of a semicircle, semi being half a circle, would be half of that, that would be 180 degrees, okay? All right? So when we're looking at this, guys, we start looking over at our figure here. It says angle ACB is a central angle because its vertex is on the center of the circle, okay? Because its vertex is on the center of the circle. Okay, so again, you can see the vertex, the middle letter in its name, ACB, is at the center, okay? So we have a 50 degree angle here, that's what we're talking about. Now we would call this a minor arc, a minor arc because its measure is less than 180 degrees. Again, less than 180 degrees, all right? Okay, now let's look at this next part, and this is pretty important here, guys. The measure of a minor arc is the measure of its central angle, okay? Central angle, okay? Now, again, I just drew the little angle symbol right there. So let's look at what this means over here, guys. We're asked for what is the measure of arc AB? Well, we see we have an intercepted angle here. An arc is intercepted by this central angle. If the central angle measures 50, that means that this arc measure right here is also 50 degrees. They're the same. So when the vertex is at the center, whatever this angle measure is here, okay, that's what this arc measure is going to be. Think about it in this terms. There is 360 degrees here going around the center of my circle, right? So all of these central angles will add up to be 360. So this whole big angle will be 360 minus 50. Well, there's also 360 going all the way around the circle, okay? So two locations, 360 degrees at the center, 360 degrees on the circle itself. So when you have a central angle, it matches the intercepted arc. Think of this like an alligator mouth, ACB. If this was an alligator mouth, it would bite off this part right here, AB. So 50 degrees at the center, 50 degrees on the circle itself. That is a big, big point that we're making here today, guys, okay? So let's talk about major arcs next, and I'm gonna bump back over and do this part at the bottom. Now it says ADB is a major arc, okay? All right, major arc. Now you can tell it's a major arc because it gives you three letters. Minor arcs will only have two letters, major arcs, okay? We're going from A to D all the way around to B. So this is the remainder of the circle, guys. Again, 360 in the center, 360 on the circle itself, okay? Now, when we look at this, it's a major arc because its measure is greater, greater than 180 degrees. Okay, so again, the measure of a major arc, all right, is the same measure as its central angle. Now look at this, guys, what we're talking about here over on this side, again, we have 360 degrees in the center, so if we're taking away 50, this would be a 310 degree central angle. So that means there's gonna be a 306, uh, 310 degree major arc. Again, the measure of arc ADB is the same as its central angle, so that would be 310 degrees, okay? Everybody see what we got going there? Again, this next example will help us a lot on this stuff, guys, okay? As we go through this, make sure you can pause, you can go back and read this, all right? I'm trying to get everything in the film here, guys, but I'm having to jump around a little bit, all right? Doing the best we can. Okay, 
Now, the next portion here, let's do some examples. I'm gonna fold my paper here, try to give you a little bit better look at it, all right? Now, for formatting, it accidentally knocked off my arcs, so all of these are arc measures. You see the little rainbow above the names? That means it's an arc. We're not asked about line segments here, it's all about the arcs. So identify the given arc as a major, minor, or semicircle, and then find the measure of the arc, okay? So this is the figure it gives us. Now the first vital piece of information we have is that AC is perpendicular to BE, okay? So that means this will be a right angle here, this will be a right angle there, right? Now I'm thinking ahead on this figure, guys, since this is a right angle, that means its intercepted arc is also gonna be 90 degrees. Same thing over here, if BEC is 90, that means arc BC is 90. Y'all see what I'm talking about there, guys? Central angles match the intercepted arcs, okay? Now, next one here, we have a little angle here, a minor arc, minor arc, so if the central angle is 40, the arc measure is also gonna be 40 degrees. You'll see what I'm talking about, guys. I'm marking up this figure before I even start working because it's gonna help me in the long run, all right? Now, one thing I do notice, it is important to notice diameters here, AC. AC is a diameter. It cuts this circle in half. Obviously, 90 plus 90 will be 180, so there's half our circle, but we also have another half over here where we have arc AD, all right, and arc DC, which are coming together to make 180 degrees, so we can find this one just by subtracting 40 from 180. So this would be a 140 degree arc measure, which means we have a 140 degree central angle measure. So again, whatever the measure is of the angle at the center, it's going to match whatever the intercepted arc is, okay? Think about the alligator mouse, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, okay? 140 over here, 140 on the outside, same thing. Okay, so as we go through and look this, this should be pretty quick on this, guys, all right? We already said the mar uh, measure of arc AB is 90 degrees, so that would be a minor arc, all right? Minor arc ABC, that would be 90 and 90, that's 180 degrees, all right? So that would be a semicircle, that is half a circle, just write semi, all right? Same thing, ABD is that semicircle, plus that extra 40, okay? So we see we're going from A to B all the way around to D. So 180 plus 40, that would give us 220 degrees. That would be a major arc because it's greater than 180, okay? Everybody see what we're talking about? And then of course BC, that's our other 90 degree arc. We found that by the perpendicular relationship there. 90 degrees, that would be a minor arc. Okay, all right, now same thing down here at the bottom, guys. Again, it says B, A, C, okay, so we start, look at this, we start at B, we go to A, we come all the way around to C. So this is just gonna be 180 plus 90, all right? Y'all see where I'm getting that from? 180 plus 90. A, C here is the 180, B, A is the 90, so 90 plus 180, all right? Everybody see what that gives us? That, of course, would give us 270, so 270 degrees there. That would be a major arc, okay? Almost done here, guys. All right, now we have the D, A, B, D to A to B. Look at this one, measure of arc, D, A, B. Starting at D, going around to A, that's 140, all right? Then A to B would be adding 90. So again, 140 plus 90, yes. That would be a 230 degree angle. That would be a major arc because it's greater than 180. All right, we already said measure of arc AD. We found that at the very beginning by subtracting here because it's a semicircle. 180 minus 40 gave us 140, 140 degrees. That would be a minor arc, okay? And CD, of course, well, we found that at the very beginning, that would be 40 degrees. That's also a minor arc, okay? All right, a couple more, guys. Um, let's look at this. In circle E, again, that should be circle E above, tell whether arc ABC and arc ADC are congruent. Explain why or why not, okay? So again, ABC, ADC. A, B, C, okay, that's a semicircle, either side of our diameter, okay? 
a DC, well, there it is. It's a semicircle as well, guys. So when I'm looking at this, I see both of these arcs hit at either side of my diameter. That means they're gonna be the same because they're both semicircles, okay? So tell whether they are congruent. Yes, they are congruent. because they are both semicircles. Both semicircles, guys. Semicircles are gonna have a measure of 180 degrees, all right? So 180 over here is gonna be the same as 180 over here. So yes, they are congruent, all right? So again, using a little bit of explanation there, they're both semicircles. And again, you could have said just, well, they're both measured 180. So if they have the same measure, then they're obviously gonna be congruent. So opportunity for different answers there, all right? All right, last one that we're gonna take a little pause before we move on to part two. Okay, so we're gonna be finding the value of X and then find the measure of AB here, guys. All right, I'm gonna set this one up for you. You're gonna have an opportunity to work this one out on your own, all right? So it says find the measure of AB, but the first thing we need to do is find the measure of X. Let's look at the circle situation here. Now it's given us all these arc measures. See, we have 40 degrees here, 70 degrees here, but then it gives us expressions for arc AD and arc AB. Now, if we think very critically here, we know the whole circle is 360. It is covering the whole circle, guys. 40 plus 70 plus 75 plus 2x plus 5x is gonna all add up to equal 360 because that's the entire circle. If we can remember that, then we just set up the equation and move forward with algebra. So here we go, we're gonna write it all out, all right? So again, we have 40 degrees plus 70 degrees plus my two expressions, 75 plus 2x, all right, 2x, plus 5x equals the whole thing, which is 360, okay? You see my expressions here have degree symbols on them. We just plug them in, guys, all right? Now, 40 plus 70 plus 75, we're gonna combine like terms here. So the rest of this would just be solving for X algebraically and taking whatever you get for X and plugging it back into 5X, multiply by five, to get A, B, okay? All right, so guys, you're gonna have some time to do this one on your own, okay? Please complete this one. I'll be moving on with part two of the video here shortly, uh, but it'll be a separate video, okay? Thank you, bye.